and tell us just what do you know injury wise? What's on your mind? Let us know. Uh, what bug did the New Orleans Saints get? Damn, I know what they got. It's called Derek Carr bug. <laughs> it's 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 bad. They lost, yeah. you know, uh, a Devo. Four row? Three or four? Four, right? Four, I think. They're two. They're five. two. Yeah, they're five. two and four right now. Five. That yeah. was week five. seven. Yeah, two and five. Yeah. They're horrible. A Debo broke his femur last night. Who? A Debo, the 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 key cornerback. How, you know how hard it is to break a femur? That's that's a, that's the strongest Mitchell. bone in the body. Freddie Mitchell. That's what I was telling you. That's yeah. crazy. That's who they exactly. rushed to the hospital or whatever. Yeah. So now they got to put a titanium rod in there, right? It's the same as it used to be, right? When Freddie Mitchell got his hold, it depends on. Right. You can it break it up location. high, though, right? You can break it up high. He broke. It depends it. on the location. Yeah. yeah. It can be. It can be in mid shaft. It can be proximal. It can be towards the knee, distal. Um, it's crazy. All I said, you know, just the force it takes to do that. It's crazy. So I know what it is. It's Taco Bell and weed. But what do I know? But anyway, the um, but. To give you an idea, there's 76 names on my list. God, okay. Damn. This is let's a go joke. do all 76 right now. Nitty, shut. <laughs> uh, that this shit is a joke. Hey, hey Doc, really, this is a jo- this is a kind of becoming a comical hour, isn't it? Like, uh, it, it's easier to talk about who's healthy than it is to say who's injured. And, and remember, there's different levels to each injury. But and what then, do I know? I only been saying it for four years. It's, it's and then worse. there's other guys that are technically healthy but coming off of an injury. Or dealing with stuff we don't even know about, you know, and you can have something like a Nico Collins where he's technically not injured for two weeks and then all of a sudden he re-injures his hammy. Hey, so, no, I want to I start this off with a with a conspiracy theorist. theorist. Oh. Let me ask you something. What if I said half of the 76 are faking it? What it's, possible. it's possible. It's possible. You think we're at that at that stage where cats are just like, you know what? I want to so, either A, move teams, B, negotiate something. It doesn't matter what time of the I year. Mean, the just did it, I, I think. I, don't I, know. I mean, I think that by week five, six, um, everybody's banged up in some capacity. Yeah, that's right. football. That's football. You know, right. But the question yeah. is, is it enough to, to hold me out? And nowadays, this change over the past five, say, ten years, they didn't really have to put people on injury reports a whole lot back then. Now they're getting penalized if they don't say anything. Oh, okay. So re- remember last year, maybe not remember, but remember last year when Bijan Robinson played like one or two snaps and then missed the rest of the game, and we we're like, "What the hell happened?" Well, apparently he was dealing with a migraine or you know headache, something in the head previously, but it, he was never on the injury report. So then he only made it a couple snaps, and then he literally didn't play the rest of the game. So. uh they, I'm assuming they got penalized for that. Uh, this trickles into Aaron Jones, who is relevant for today, because he said the game before the bye, he felt something in his right, I believe it was his right hip, it might have been his left hip, um, before the game, stretched out, didn't say anything. A lot of these guys don't. They just deal with it, and, and if it never pops up, fine. But he felt something mid-game, obviously, left, and then was trying to get comfortable on the sidelines. And ends up, um, coaches like or staff is like, it's not worth the risk. We have a buy next week. You know, we were they were still up by a decent amount at that time. But the prop that's that's part of the problem is that guys are always dealing with something. The question is, is it enough to to, to re-injure and to re-aggravate? Um, and for that situation, it did. For even though they called Aaron Jones a hip, it's actually proximal hamstring. So when we look, here's my little model. Not really little. It's freaking huge. So if you see back here, so this is the front of the hip. Yeah. So see back here, some people will call this hip. This mm-hmm. is actually where the hamstring attaches. Mm-hmm. So you have so you have hamstring attaching it up here. It's 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 not, it's easier to show it when the model's off the arm, but yeah. But so so that's the part of the problem is that there's a tendon, there's multiple tendons attached there, and he's he he might try to play this weekend, but he's at high risk for re-injury. And he's going to be in a timeshare regardless. And they have a t- tough matchup. He's just a tough rushing, rushing matchup. So it's going to be him and Chandler. Um, but we saw him last year miss, I think it was a total of six games with, with a, a hammy and then a, a knee. This is probably a different hammy because these are usually more uh, kind of random as opposed to the mid 
body mid mid on like mid leg ones. Um, Doc, real quick, is he real play? quick question before I lose my mind. So, like, are you saying or what I'm reading from you is you're saying that teams have to track almost every injury now so they don't get penalized. Correct. Do you think? Do you think that could be a factor in why the numbers seem to be? tremendously inflated compared to what it was 10 years ago because you saying yes. that tells me that maybe the injuries have are around the same amount just that Correct. they're having to actually show every little Correct. little thing a and, headache uh, and that and that goes whatever. further so you won't know this unless you treat the players but if it, they're on the injury report it goes under one insurance if they're not on the injury report it goes on their other insurance oh. so you're talking about two different bags of money got you so now, now you see it from a financial perspective. If it happens on the field or on the practice squad, it goes under work comp. If it it goes, if it happens not on the field, whatever car accident, like just random, then it goes under their personal insurance, which is like a big bag of money. It's not really insurance, but you know, so that plays a role in it too. Hey, I want work comp to pay for this. I want this to go on the injury report. Got you. Damn. See? Okay. It makes so, so, you, you, know, you might not think of that, but it, when you look at it, if you if you deal with any type of medicine, you'd understand. Like, hey, yeah, this is. I want them to pay for it versus this company to pay for it, or me paying for it. Um, it's semantics, but that's part of the reason why you will see names on the injury report. And most of the stuff is not really relevant per se. Uh, that's why usually by t by Thursday, I get a good gauge. Um, and then Friday, I, I usually really, really know you still have your guys that are 50, 50, that, that are game time decisions. Like that's a coin flip. You, 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 we literally don't know the player might not even know. Um, but last week I, I predicted, you know, I, I put up 35 guys that I said, Hey, this one's going to play. This one's not going to play. And there was like five or six more that I just said they were 50, 50. I could go either way. 33 of the 35 were correct. So you have a good idea by Friday, or I have a good idea by Friday, the people that study this and understand the intricacies of it. Uh, there's variables. There's ones like, hey, uh, you know, uh, what who you call IR5 uh, was supposed to play last week, right? We right. He was playing. And then all of a sudden they're like, Flacco's playing. We're like, huh? And then like, what happened with Pittman? Like you go from IR to playing? Like, what the hell? So like, that's rare. That doesn't happen, but it happened. It's it just, you know, it's fluky. It's, the hard part is keeping track of it all. Um, yeah. You know, and, and then that's kind of why I spend probably an hour a day at least tracking all this stuff. Um, you know, quarterbacks, most of them are healthy. Uh, Drake May popped up on the injury report with a knee, uh, had an MRI after his Wednesday practice, which is pretty rare, you'd think. But he practiced in full yesterday. They flew out to London last night. Um and he's a full go, so that's good. Uh, Baker Mayfield play, tweaked his rib. He's fine. He's got a great matchup. He's been really good in fantasy. Uh, Rodgers, he gets his buddy back. Uh, ankle, hamstring, he'll be okay. Uh, obviously, we saw Derek Carr miss. He might need another week last, uh, and, and, you know, next week. Um, and then Anthony Richardson sounds like he's a go. Uh, again, if I were to uh, guess what's bothering him the most, it's going to be oblique. Um, it's just because they linger the most and they, and, and they and affect him the most. The hip is fine. The abdominal is, is probably just a bruise or a tweak. I'm not worried about that. And then, um, okay. Quick, uh, big question for you. Um, uh, Nick Chubb is back this weekend, right? Um, correct. any concerns if you're a Cleveland Browns fan or if you got, if you got Chubb on your fantasy football team, like, is there any major concerns or just like some re-injury or tweaks or him being slowed down? What's, what's your take on Yeah, I mean, so Nick Chubb, uh, happy to see him get back on the field. Bad, bad injury that could have ended a lot of careers. Thankfully, it didn't. Uh, but we will see Nick Chubb make his debut this week. He's going to have some issues with cutting, just some confidence in that knee. He might not look as good as maybe in his prime, which is fine. He's what, almost 29, I think. Yeah. Um he is at increased risk for some of these minor uh, ailments that come along the way as you're coming back. Javante Williams had one last year in his hip. Um, but, you know, I, I'm expecting him to get around 8 to 12 touches. They may go run heavy uh, because just how awful, you know, uh, we saw Watson look. So realistically, um, they could try to pound the rock with him. Uh, with Jerome Ford being uh, out for probably a couple of weeks with his hamstring, uh, they're, they're going to get some of the other guys involved. So it's going to be a committee. 
Uh, Pierre Strong is probably going to do the receiving and the third down work. Maybe Dante Foreman comes in. Uh, but but I think it will take a couple weeks to get the rust off, but I'll be excited to see uh, Nick Chubb. Hopefully 8 to 10 points is realistically what I'm thinking for um, Chubb, unless he happens to rumble into the end zone. Those, you know, he's not much of a receiver. Right. I don't expect him to come back and drop 20 carries. Like, that would be kind of silly in my opinion. Hey Doc, where are we at with Derek Carr? Since we're talking to Saints, where yeah. where is this? Uh, what is this all oblique? What is it? So it, it's a, it's a left oblique strain, probably in grade two. So we're talking um, so all we're, the way down here. So we're talking. Yep. Where the ribs attach, the the muscles right here. Um. So, and it's on his non-dominant side. So I mean, when he's throwing to his right. And then he's coming back with his left. That's the muscle that fires to come back. So, and, and they were talking about it last night, uh, saying uh, with him, like indirectly. And he said, basically, um, it hurts to even rotate back still. Mm. They have 10 days to the next game, right? Um, but but even then, you're still playing with fire because you tweak it and you're going to re-injure it again. These, these are notorious for re-injury. So, would not be surprised if he misses another game. Um, you know, Hainer looked, better than Rattler and, 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 and who look rattled um, in, you know, a series or two, whatever he ended up finishing with. Uh, but, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, Olave left, Rashid's done for the season with a bad meniscal tear that required repair. Uh, Taysom Hill has uh, multiple rib fractures. He could potentially be back next week. Um, you know, they, they lost, uh, what's his name? Their stud corner. I think it was name in a minute uh, with a hammy again last night. So, you know, they're just, just yeah, they banged up. Play, uh, they had to play the kid uh, from Alabama. Kool-Aid. Yeah. yeah. Kool-Aid, yeah. Uh, it's still crazy then, name boggles my mind. Fuck, interesting. I, uh, I love it. Any, you said 76 injuries, so who else would bother, like, a lot of these DFS guys? Who, who yeah, would, yeah, yeah. Come your so name? be careful oh, with Jordan name, Mason. We think. Be careful with Jordan Mason. Um, Why? Because AC sprains – uh, as a as a receiver, you can kind of get away with it, but you're running into people every single time with that shoulder. So you're not going to have the same level of just bulldozing. It, it just hurts. I know he had 10 days, but these don't heal in 10 days. They may feel better. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Garendo got a decent amount of look this week. Uh, and they got a tough matchup. This is a this is one of the top rush defenses they're facing. So is it would it be unrealistic? They're just going to throw the ball to Kittle 25 times. Um we will. I'll get to wide receivers in a sec. Someone just tweeted. Um, Travis Etienne could potentially play, uh, even though he tweaked his hamstring. Avoid him. Tr don't trust him. Tank should be the guy. Uh, Jerome Ford's going to be out, and Ty J Spears should be out with both with hammies. Nigel Harris will be fine with his rib. Uh, Ray Davis looked incredible last week. Tweaked his calf. We'll see how that plays out. But we will we'll see uh, James Cook return. Jonathan Brooks needs probably two more weeks just to get acclimated. Um, Bijan will be fine with his minor hammy. Rashad White probably going to be back in a crazy full blown committee at this point. Um, A Chan will be back with his concussions with no drop in um, stats or efficiency or anything. Uh, increased risk of re injury, but but not but no in terms of production. No, Ramondre Stevenson is a game time decision. Remember, this is a nine thirty game in London. Uh, so he has a fantastic matchup. If he is active, you can start him. Um, a little surprised they're going to do this because he has not practiced in over a week. Uh, he's missed five or six practices in a row. So, uh, but it's a, probably a midfoot sprain, if I were to guess, a mild one. Um, uh, Kamara is, you know, had 13 touches last night for 34 yards. He was upset. I'm just telling you, he got blown up four times on pass on passes like. 100%. Like he set his ass up. Every time he turned around, his ass got bombed. <laughs> yeah, like, we know what you're doing. And it's unfortunate. It's just, it was just, we knew he was going to get the volume of targets. We just didn't know what the yardage was going to be. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked if he's the next guy that asked for a trade. He needs and to get the traded. Longest, the Cowboys need to get to grab him. He is the longest tenured running back in the NFL right now. Yeah. Yeah. Eight years. Juco guy. Paid his dues. I just think at this point, man, if he wants to really, like, Grow I know. have a chance to compete. He needs to go somewhere else, man. He's a good but he dude. just resigned, I think. He just resigned. Yeah, I did. But Damn. yeah, but but we this team ain't going nowhere. This team ain't going nowhere. Jonathan Taylor needs at least another week with his high ankle. <clears throat> you can see him. You see him in the interviews yesterday. He just didn't. He's like, I I just can't do it. Like it's not a pain thing. It's just like I, 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 can't I hear do he's it. Go, I hear he's going to Canes to work full time. 
at Canes. Raising Canes, yeah. Raising Canes, yeah. They were at Dairy uh, Queen, homie. Goodson is probably going to be the guy this week. They're great matchup against Miami. Great matchup. Great matchup. Um, they they can't they can't they can't. It's hard to be hard to throw the ball, but they you can run the ball in Miami. Run the ball like Brian Robinson ball. should be back. Uh, Joe Mixon's not one hundred percent, but he'll be good. Uh, Singletary will probably be back. Probably a split backfield with Tracy. Hey, Joe Bowen Mixon. Best. Joe Mixon balled last week for fantasy. He did look good, and he got. If you watch the game, it was, he was playing my Patriots, so I was watching. He was hobbled most of that game yeah. on that big seventy whatever yard run. If he wasn't injured, he would have scored a touchdown. Yeah. But he was hobbled. Like, you could see him, like, you know, and that's okay. Like, he's coming back from a high ankle. Okay, fine. I'm heavy Tank Dell. Heavy Tank Dell and Diggs right now with Nico out. Yeah, with no question. And both have an amazing matchup this week. Both are going to smash. Both top 10 fantasy for 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 wide receivers. Samir White could come back, kind of irrelevant in my opinion. Um, and, and Bucky Irving, again, in the committee, should be fine with that hamstring. Switching over to uh, wide receivers. Jaden Reed and Dotavia Wicks uh, both banged up. I think probably both play, so they'll have everyone. They have a tough uh, matchup, though, and Tucker Craft has a tough matchup with his groin injury. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr., we should find out more today if he's going to be able to clear the concussion protocol. He's had a tough go of it. Um, so, you know, can I justify sitting him? I can. I, I can. Kyler has not looked good. Uh, they do get Zay Jones back from a suspension slash hamstring strain. Um, they added Michael Wilson with a with an ankle injury. James Conner, uh, thankfully, uh, did okay. He he tweaked his ankle last week, but he's not on the report this week. Um, uh, well, the the wide receivers for the Chargers are banged up. I don't know if Quentin Johnson's going to play this week, and mm. uh, Lad McConkey's dealing with a hip. He might play. It's too early. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a Monday game, so we don't have a lot of data yet. Juwan Jennings could potentially miss with also a hip. He hasn't practiced yet this week, but he's been phased out with with a healthy Debo, uh, Ayuk, and, and Kittle. So he's kind of the, the odd man out. I, I, maybe Pearsall makes his debut this week or next week. That'll be kind of cool to see. Uh, Debo tweaked his wrist, but he'll be fine. Mike Evans dealing with a hamstring strain, but this dude, you'd have to chop off his leg to miss a game, so I would not be surprised if if he plays. Again, he's kind of be probably a relative decoy, uh, and this may be the med staff like saying, hey, no, like we're not going to let you play, but I don't know. This could go either way. All I know is Godwin has been incredible and has the top matchup in fantasy this week for, for wide receivers. Um, you, know, you, know, you notice a trend though, like seriously, like I don't know why Smitty and those, these young cats don't understand or pick it up, or they just won't admit it, because uh, the generation of Smitty's generation soft as uh, baby piss. But let me just tell you, all young wideouts you just mentioned are these year, first, second year guys who this is the generation. But why is Mike Evans ass still playing every fucking snap? Why is Godwin playing every fucking snap? It's crazy to me, man, that that these cats will defend these pussies. That are all out. Look at these soft guys that are out every day. Yeah, Andre Hopkins, the same thing. You Real can... quick, Jason, you are aware that these guys that you're naming are the ones who are in my generation, homie. Mike Evans, Godwin, DeAndre Hopkins. That is my generation, homie. Just for clarity. I'm, I'm not a 19-year-old. Mike Evans older than you. <laughs> we in the same fucking bubble, homie. Uh, Cooper Cup. Uh, pop oh, there up. we go. Cooper Cup. There we go. Cooper, Co Cooper Cup looking pretty good. Not super aggressive cutting yet, which isn't surprising with his high ankle. I would not be surprised if they held him out this week. I don't think he's quite ready. He's close. Stay if this was an important game, I think they would play him. I'm pretty sure they're playing the Raiders. Um, so I don't, I don't think they need him. Uh, people keep asking about Puka, which is a very warranted question. I did tweet about Puka the other day. Saying, you said he might stay out the whole year? Okay, so here's the problem with this injury. He has a, a pretty significant PCL sprain. PCL sprains don't traditionally undergo surgery, but they take forever to heal because this is the ligament that basically stabilizes your knee from slap, collapsing, going backwards, the opposite of the ACL. So the problem with this is it's very tough to run a route, stop on a dime, and cut because the knee is unstable. So if you're playing on a 2-10 and 10 team, 2-9 and nine team, that really doesn't have a shot for the playoffs. And this is your star future wide receiver because Cooper Cup is presumably either on his way out or a much less contract. Is it really in your best interest to potentially risk this knee injury again or further or worse? It, it may be far-fetched, but we, we have to start thinking of that type of stuff as we start to get into the double-digit weeks, especially for the teams that may not, you know, and from a fantasy perspective, you definitely have to look into it because most teams start playoffs in 13 or 14. So it becomes relevant. It becomes important. If he comes back in week 10 or 12, like, can you trust him? 
You know, I don't know. I, it'll be interesting to see. We have not heard a single thing besides the other day saying he's not going to practice this week. I don't know if you mentioned he's not this, back but... to practice yet. Yeah, that's it's about practice, Doc. Practice. Yeah. We'll go back to the uh, AI. Hey, the the Vikings traded again to get yep. Cam Akers back. Yep. They got a running back back. That tells me something's not right there with Aaron Jones. Uh, uh, there's a further part to this story. Jones just said he's likely to play. It just popped up a minute ago. Um, but the Vikings tried to go get Khalil Herbert from the Bears. But the Bears didn't want to budge on the ask. That's why they went back to get Akers, who doesn't look very good, but he knows the system because he was there last year. Uh, this is reinforcement. Uh, he's not going to take anyone's job. Uh, but this yeah, is a tough yeah. matchup. And I think maybe all three of them play, which becomes even worse. Mm. Um, I got about 10 more guys to cover and, and, and we can head out. Cool. Uh, cool. uh, Juju popped up with a, um, with a hamstring injury yesterday. Uh, obviously not good. Um, so we'll have to see if he's able to go, uh, if it's midweek, if they just decided to add it. I, I, I don't know. Um, they haven't obviously traded any for one. There were some rumblings that they did ask for Devontae Adams, but they said we're not going to trade in the division. Um, we'll see. Malik Neighbors cleared concussion protocol, and he's still, I think, the wide receiver eight, even though he hasn't played in two weeks. Um, so uh, rock and roll back, uh, smash, no dip in performance at all. Uh, Devontae Adams gets his new jersey, gets his new shoes, and will make his debut, even though he's got a tough defense. Um, Josh Downs and Michael Pitts will play again. Khalil Shakir uh, has a very tough matchup. Tennessee's defense is legit. Uh, he'll be closer to 100%. Uh, Amari Cooper may or may not make his debut, uh, which is unfortunate if, if you have him and you don't know what to do with him. Uh, Jacoby Myers has not been able to get on the practice field, so I don't know if he's going to play. This is probably closer to a high ankle than it is a, a, just a simple ankle because he's missed like four or five practices in a row. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Bowers is going to smash this week. Um, and then, you know, most of, uh, we don't know what's going on with Deontay Johnson. Back-to-back -back DNPs, they're mm. blaming it on ankle. Is this a trade candidate? Is it truly an ankle? I don't know. Uh, Xavier Get Leggett becomes a sneaky guy. Um, you, you know, uh, Coker, I think his name is. It looked pretty good last week. Um, transitioning to uh, tight, end, uh, tight ends. Uh, Trey McBride looked like he tweaked his knee last week, but he ended up not being on the report, so no concerns there. Dallas Goddard should be out this week with a new hamstring strain. Grant Calcaterra could potentially fill in for him. Dalton Kincaid dealing with a collarbone, which is not a common injury to be a limited practice. Probably more of a bruise than anything. He has a very tough matchup again, so you can sit him if you have to. Um, Hawkinson still undecided. Uh, if he's going to play this week in his debut from his ACL reconstruction, he's going to be a little rusty for a couple weeks, and he's got a tough matchup this week. So if there's a week to sit out, this is probably going to be it. Um, Najoku could smash in light of Cooper leaving. Um, and, you know, uh, he's his knee and ankle doing okay. They're better than they were a couple weeks ago. Uh, most of the other guys are going to be fine. Firemuth with a calf, Conklin with a, with a hip. Uh, Tucker Kraft with a groin, Kittle pretty much close to 100% with his rib. Taysom Hill, as I mentioned, probably be back next week. And then Evan Ingram, even though he is still dealing with that hamstring, and he's still at a little bit increased high risk or uh, increased risk for re-injury, uh, got, what, 10 or 12 targets last week. So uh, definitely start him as he's active because that he, he looked like he never left. No doubt. Yeah, that's, that's some good shit, Doc. Um, full breakdown, anyone, anyone, you, Doc. Yeah, I, we appreciate it. Friday before the season. If you guys can't get this anywhere else, uh, hopefully you make your picks off of Doc's uh, DFS stuff.